I'm a guy who doesn't really obsess too much over things. I don't put too much thought into clothes. I don't collect anything in particular. I live in a relatively small apartment and I don't even own a car. But when it comes to phones, well, the first statement definitely does not apply. After using the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge for about a year and a half, it was time for a change and after weighing all the pros and cons of all the flagship devices of 2017, in my mind it was only a question of whether I would go for the Pixel 2 XL or the iPhone 8 Plus. And both devices would have marked a first for me, either my first pure Android experience or my first iOS experience. After giving it some thought, I decided to go with the Pixel. And today, well, I'm going to show you what's on it. Now this is the part where I could tell you how you guys requested this video so many times, but that's really not the case. I'm making this video because I thought it would be fun, and it gives me an opportunity to sort of justify spending probably much more money than I should have on a phone by doing something sort of productive with it. So here goes nothing. Right off the bat, you'll notice that I don't have all that much going on on my lock screen and my home screen. Right here, I have the standard Google Assistant shortcut on the bottom left, a camera shortcut on the bottom right, and a pretty standard clock widget thing up top. Moving to the home screen, you'll notice the stock Google Launcher, and you can see that things look pretty clean here as well. Going from the bottom up, there's the Google Search widget, which can't be moved or removed, two rows of apps, the Pixel 2 Date Slash Weather widget, which also cannot be removed, by the way, and a clock. So obviously, I like to keep things clean on my home screen, which allows me to really see the most of my background. Now, some people don't really care all that much about wallpapers and background pictures, but that's definitely not me. I'm all about the wallpapers, and this particular one is from the Earth Gallery of the wallpapers that Google offers for the Pixel 2. You also have a few live wallpapers that feature very slight movements. Those also look really cool, but currently, I just decided to go with something else. So in the top row of apps are mostly things I use for YouTube and business. First is the Google Chrome web browser, which is the only browser I use, whether it be on a phone or desktop PC. I don't really use it for browsing on my phone though. I do all my browsing with the Google search bar, but I find myself using Chrome mostly when I need to view a desktop version of a website. Next I have Gmail, which is my preferred mail service. Very simple, easy to organize, convenient for school or business emails, pretty standard stuff. And then we have Twitter, which is a platform that I've only started to really get into. I've had a Twitter account for my YouTube channel for more than three years, but it's only been a few months that I'm actually being more active on it and really trying to offer some cool additional content to go alongside my YouTube channel. And this is mostly behind the scenes and personal stuff, so if you haven't already, you can do me a favor and follow me on Twitter at chmtech. It would be much appreciated. And yeah, I'm Team Night Mode on Twitter, so no hate for the daytime patrol, but just saying. Next I have my YouTube and YouTube Studio app, so pretty standard stuff. I'd really like to meet a person who doesn't have the YouTube app on their phone. On Android I think you actually have to have it. Can you even uninstall it? No. No you can't. Never thought of that before. Why would you? The Creator Studio is a must have for any YouTube creator. I spend much more time here than I'd like to admit, so let's just move on. So, bottom app row, there's the phone app, nicely organized in Android O. Coming from a Galaxy device, I do miss the option of making a call by entering a contact page and then simply putting the phone to my ear when I'm ready, but I really can't complain. Next is my SMS message app, system settings, which I always like to conveniently place in the middle, Google Play, and finally, the camera app. Now, there's really not much left to say about the Pixel 2 camera. I'm pretty sure you're up to date, but this thing is amazing. I've never seen better photos taken on a phone. I know that we've gotten to a point where smartphone cameras have gotten so good that saying one is better than another is only a matter of preference, but for me, and as far as I can tell for a lot of other people as well, this thing is just on a whole new level. So moving on to the right, I have a few more things on display. I have a very small widget for AccuWeather, which is my weather app of choice. The default Google widget on the home screen does display weather information, but only when location is switched on, which drains a lot of battery juice, so yeah, that's why I have this one. Moving further up, I have three messaging apps, and those are WhatsApp, Viber, and Facebook Messenger. I do most of my chatting with Viber, but some people I know only use WhatsApp or Messenger, so I have those as well. Further up, I have Google Photos to the left, Facebook to the right, and Deezer in the middle, which is currently my music listening app of choice. Now, I'm not here to tell you that Deezer is better than Spotify or whatever else. 
It's simply the thing that works best for me at the moment. It has a very wide variety of artists and songs. I'm yet to desire listening to a song that they don't have, so that's one thing. And the other is that I can create five additional premium profiles for my family members and friends, and I think the price is something like 10 and a half euros a month. Finally, up here I have Google Docs, which is something that I've found myself using all the time. Lately, I've been writing all my scripts here. I just find it extremely convenient that I can be writing something on my desktop PC and then immediately have that ready for access on my phone where I can continue writing or reading without having to copy a file or do any sort of manual transferring whatsoever. For the past year or so, I've literally replaced Microsoft Word with Docs, which is definitely not as powerful as Word, but does everything I personally need it to do. And finally, I have my clock and Shazam for my music recognition needs. Now, the Pixel 2 XL, as well as the ordinary Pixel 2, both have an option called Now Playing, which, if turned on, listens for nearby music and, if possible, gives you the name of the song and artist on the lock screen. And Google actually says that this works offline. It's a nice feature, but I find Shazam to work best for me, and I mostly keep the inbuilt Pixel 2 option off because Frankly, I don't need it to be constantly giving me music information, and also, I guess it just saves up some power, so that's that. Now before I show you some additional apps that I use from the app drawer, if I go to the left of my home screen, you can see this Google Assistant feed area, which should basically show you things that you tell it you're interested in. And for me, it's been pretty good. I find that I really am interested in the majority of the stories it shows me. I also have it set up to show me weather and traffic information. So yeah, apart from some basic UI shortcomings, like no ability to swipe away stories or maybe even preview a story, it's been pretty decent. So before I end this video, I'm gonna mention just a few more apps that I use. Mobizen, Pixlr, and Video Show. First one is for screen recording, second one is for image editing, and the third one is for video editing. Now, you can find a lot of Android apps that do these things, but for me, these are by far the best. So, this is sort of like a mini YouTube video creating station for me, and it's been really handy in many occasions, especially during travel or on the fly. And of course, I also use apps like Google Maps. There's the DJI Go app for my Mavic Pro, a cube timer for speed cubing, which is something that I was into a lot a few years ago, but still do from time to time. Not that good as I was though, but it's still pretty fun. I have the Guitar Tuna app for my guitar, which is also something I don't play around with as much as I used to, but still enjoy a lot when I do. Uh, I use Google Keep for making notes, which is something that I used to do in the Memo app on my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. I also sometimes use Skype, usually for long distance calls. TripAdvisor for figuring out where to go and what to do when I go someplace new, and yeah, that's mostly it. So there's obviously much more apps on my phone that I haven't mentioned, but the ones I talked about are the ones that I mostly use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I'm a person that likes to play around with a lot of different apps, sometimes because I need them for something, but mostly just for fun. However, I'm not someone who just piles a bunch of apps on their phone, so most of those end up being deleted after only a few days of usage, very often even after a few hours. So maybe someday I start a series about apps for you guys, but who knows, that's a whole nother story. As for this one, that would be it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong.